God of War is one of the best game franchises ever created, both commercially and artistically. Similar to every genre defining IP, the folks at Santa Monica Studio always try to push the envelope of what you can do with each entry in the series, that's both in development and presentation. Talking about presentation, God of War has hands down one of the best animations in the industry right now. The folks at Santa Monica Studios did an amazing job, as the characters' animations flow seamlessly from one activity to another, and it was so smooth. Today we're gonna take a look at how the development team managed to leverage the power of Maya to create these animated masterpieces of video games. This video is mostly a summary of the devs' presentation at GDC 2019 Autodesk Developer Day session, where Axel Grossman will explain the way their team worked on the animations of God of War. But before we do that, let me talk about today's sponsor, Class Creatives. They offer one of the best ranked game design curriculums online. You will learn from experts in the field who also have experience teaching at accredited universities. All these courses are taught by seasoned professionals who have worked for companies like Disney Animation, Naughty Dog, Isomniac Games, Sony, Google, and more. In their masterclass courses, the full character animation workflow is covered from start to finish. Character animation fundamentals emphasize the value of video references to bring characters to life utilizing Maya and Unreal Engine. Extensive character rigging courses teach the process of how to custom rig characters for all your project's needs. And the great thing about Class Creatives is the ability to learn at your own pace and your own schedule. Get started today with the link in the description and use our unique code to receive a special 25% discount. Now, let's talk about God of War animations. First, we're gonna start with animation retargeting. Animation retargeting is the process of repurposing existing animations for use between multiple characters. So, if you have an animation for one character, you don't need to create the animation again. Instead, share your animation between multiple characters, which is really smart. The team at Santa Monica used a combination of tools that you can find in Maya and Human IK for Motion Builder to achieve that. As part of his talk, Axel Grossman, the lead character technical artist for the game, mentioned that he created a script to bridge and transfer animations between the two applications. By default in Maya, if you swap your reference, it won't take into account the scale change of the character. So if you are planning to apply the same rig to a different character, you're gonna have to scale your translation values to match the two rigs. Needless to say, that's a lot of work, not to mention that it may not lead to as good of a result as a human IK solver approach. So, using human IK grants you access to even more retargeting parameters, such as forcing extreme poses that you want your character to do. So, the workflow for retargeting the team ends up with is first generating a human IK skeleton and using a custom Python script. They can now retarget any rig animation to any character while taking into account the size and all constraints. And to bring this to Maya, the versatility that Maya provides allows the software to work with a multitude of different software and even develop custom scripts to streamline the production pipeline. This is one of the reasons why the God of War team and a lot of developers like to work with Maya. And it goes without saying that Maya is a software of choice for a lot of AAA studios around the globe. Now, talking about motion capture or mocap, which is a staple in the industry and at this point, Every game studio, at a certain extent, is now taking advantage of this awesome technology to drive their animations and scene preparations. The mocap approach is a lot faster than traditional animation, which includes rigging or tracing over references as you can easily capture animations and iterate through basically in real time with all scenarios and settings. Not only that, because you can easily plan your shots by putting your objects directly inside the environment and quickly experiment with different camera positions or different animation sequences. Surprisingly enough, all the God of War games were hand keyed, which means most of the animations you see on the screen were created frame by frame, but as the game rose up in scale and the team had to produce more animations at such high level of fidelity, motion capture had to be introduced to the pipeline. And of course, the team used Maya for this, inspired by the one-click solution that Maya shipped with. They also incorporated Motion Builder into the pipeline because, aside from the fact that it is very fast, it uses real-time camera, which is basically a single camera that follows the actor the entire time, as well as powerful non-linear editing tools. Basically, Motion Builder allows you to automatically export FBX and import them to Maya, 
if you have matching names, which is a really fast process that allows the devs to bake animations and transform them to Maya with one click. Alright, this point might not be related to Maya specifically, but in the facial rigging step, the team used the facial action coding system to drive their blunt shapes. This is a system that was published back in 1978 by Dr. Paul Ackman, but you don't have to know all the details and the history of it. All you need to know is that it is an anatomically based system for describing or visually discernible facial movements. Partnering with Sony Visual Art Services Group and taking advantage of these systems, the team created roughly 800 shapes to drive all the facial animations in the game using the Facial Actions Coding System Manager tool, which is custom built to help you model various folders and then rebuild the rigs as needed. For wrinkles and blood flow, Axel outlined in his presentation that he used Maya Shader Effects to rebuild his shader. Shader Effects is a real-time node-based shader editor that you can use to create advanced viewport shaders. For God of War, the team used 6 maps, 3 for wrinkles and 3 for blood flow, and then played around with those regions that will be affected by different maps, like the chin and the forehead areas that were chosen based on the rig joint position in the face. We also have the post space deformation, which is a post correction technique in which the deformer is used to correct another deformer driven by a pose or an object. In the case of God of War, it was a vertex offset, basically a blend shaped target. It is very similar to Maya's set driven key, but far more flexible. So, in order to blend between two different poses, they use something called RBF, or radial basic function in Maya. This is essentially an animation curve, unlike PSD, which is moving vertices. RBF was basically used on stuff like armor deformation, like on Kratos and heavily armored enemies, and on props and environment rigging, and also Freya's hair. PSD, on the other hand, was used for muscle correction for Kratos and Boulder, in addition to facial fix up and various miscellaneous uses. And of course, there is more to it than that. So I encourage you maybe to take a look at the GDC talk to see more for yourself. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also take a look at our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.